Hey friends, in this video we're gonna show you how to wire up your home security. Okay, now I know there's a lot of really cool wireless systems on the market, and if you're going wireless, that's fantastic, go for it. I love a lot of the wireless systems I've used, but if you're somebody who wants to hardwire your security system, these are our recommendations for wiring your security system. First up, we wanna wire up your keypads, and I will say, even if you're doing a wireless system, if you're building a new home or you're remodeling, wire up for your keypads. They still need power, and, and aesthetically, it's gonna look a lot better on the wall if you hardwire it than if you're trying to hide the transformer somewhere near the keypad location. For your keypads, we're gonna use a 22-4 wire. There's not really a right or wrong to how you use these but a rule of thumb we use is we stack our keypads above light switches when the room they're going to be located and at a height of five feet so your mud room your master bedroom or any other critical entry points in your home we're going to look for the light switch closest to that door and we're going to stack the keypad above that light switch at a height of five feet again you don't have to do it that way just aesthetically it makes everything in your home look deliberate next up we've got our doors and windows and real fast before i get into this if you're doing your research there's a good chance you've read online about looping i'm not going to get into looping in this video but two things about looping number one don't loop your doors. Number two, if you're going to loop, loop on the can side where the wires plug into the security system. Don't loop out at your windows, okay? There's a lot of damage that can happen to your wires during construction, and if you're looping out at the windows, you're very vulnerable at the first wire in that loop getting damaged and then not having any more hardwired sensors in your window. So home run your wires to every single window and every single door, and then if you decide you want to loop it, loop it on the security can side later. Okay, for your door sensors, you're going to run a 22-2 wire. Okay, with your door sensors, there are two types of door sensors. There's a plunger, and a 3 8 inch press fit. Plungers go in the frame of the door on the hinge side of the door. 3 8 inch press fits go in the frame of the door, but they go above the door or on the latch side of the door. There's not really a right or a wrong as to why you would use one over the other. The big thing that people look at is that a 3 8 inch press fit has two pieces. One piece that goes into the frame of the door and then a magnet that recesses into the door itself. Whereas the plunger just recesses into the frame, it never touches the door. A lot of people don't want to drill holes in their very nice new doors, understandably, and so they elect to go with a plunger so that they don't have to mess with the doors. I recommend consulting the spec sheet of the sensor that you're buying so you know how big the hole should be and how deep it should be. You want to get that right during construction. Once you pull the wire through the hole, you can't go back and re-drill the hole. So you need to make sure that it's deep enough and the right size for the sensor that you're going to place in it later. Window sensors are also going to use a 22-2 wire. I'm not going to get a whole lot into the how-to here on your window sensors. Uh, this is one that's better to have pictures and video and we'll put some of that out for you soon. But a couple of things to know, typically your window sensors are going to be surface mount they're not going to be recessed now you can recess them but as a general rule you'll see that even with hardwired sensors they are usually surface mount now if you want to recess your security sensors into the track of the window you need to consult with your window manufacturer the windows have a protective seal to guard against moisture and when you penetrate the track you go through that seal you void the warranty on your windows but if you contact the window manufacturer or your rep for the window manufacturer they'll often tell you that if you penetrate the track six inches down from the top or six inches up from the base of the window that you will miss that protective seal and you won't void the warranty. Next up are your motion sensors. We're gonna use a 22-4 wire. Usually we place motion sensors in what we call the heart of the home. These are gonna be places like your great room, your living room, a bonus room or a media room, sort of that main gathering area. And you're gonna place it in the corner of the room at a height of seven feet, ideally. Now online you may read about some goofy things you can do to manipulate the motion for different applications. You can turn it upside down and mount it at a height of four feet. And if you wanna try that, that's great. But our recommendation to keep it simple is to mount the motion at a height of seven feet in the corner of the room you're gonna be using. Using it in. As to how many motion sensors you should use, that's totally up to you. You can put one in every room. You can put them in just the main gathering areas. It's totally up to you. For glass break sensors, we are also going to use a 22-4 wire. I highly recommend using glass breaks in your security system. The way security systems work when you're home, you set the security system to stay mode and it turns your motion sensors off so that you can move about the home without tripping your own alarm. But that means there's nothing protecting your windows. Glass break sensors stay on even when the security system's in stay mode. So when you're home, your windows are still protected by the glass break. The other cool thing about glass breaks is they cover all the windows that are in sight within 15 feet. There are some glass breaks that go to 20 feet, but when we're designing a security system, we always plan our, our glass breaks to be within 15 feet of the windows they're covering. Those windows also need to be line of sight. There can't be major obstructions between the glass break and the windows. But if you think of a, a great room, a family room, a master bedroom, where there's gonna be a lot of windows in the room, one glass break will cover all of those windows that are visible within 15 feet. So they're very, very effective. There are some glass breaks that wall 
wall mount, but by and large, your glass breaks are going to be ceiling mount. They look like a smoke detector and a smaller form factor. Next up, we want a wire for your siren, and we're going to use an 18-2 wire for your siren. A lot of your keypads are going to have sounders on board that act as a siren, but if you have a larger home, you're not going to hear it throughout the home. So we recommend wiring up at least one siren, and if it's a really large home, you might even consider wiring up your siren maybe one per floor or in key areas throughout the house so that you actually hear the alarm when it goes off. We usually place a siren next to the doorbell chime. It makes sense. There's already a chime on the wall, so it's easy to place a siren right next to the chime. Now, lastly, there's some specialty sensors, uh, flood sensors, overhead garage door sensors. We're not going to exhaust this list, but usually you're going to run a 22-2 wire for these specialty sensors. And if you're ever not sure what to run, if there's something you're thinking you might use, but you haven't found the right sensor for it, run a 22-4. Lastly, I want to talk about smoke detectors. We've been getting a lot of questions from our pre-wire design clients about smoke detectors. We cannot make recommendations about placements or how you wire your smoke detectors. State to state, city to city, there are a ton of regulations and very strict regulations about how those smoke detectors are placed. Your local contractor, your builder, your electricians, they're going to be familiar with that code. They'll steer you in the right direction. But what I can tell you is that if you're using some higher end security system, there are some really cool things you can do with your smoke detectors if it's wired up correct. It's sort of like having a zoned fire alarm system. So when there's a fire in the home, the security system knows exactly what room the fire is in, and that can trigger announcements to go through your speaker system throughout the home. So if there are a fire, it might say fire in master bedroom, exit hallway door, and it's going to help get your family and your loved ones out of the home safely. And that's it for our video on how to wire up your security system. If you have any questions at all, feel free to leave us a message. We really appreciate all the comments we've been getting. I am going to leave a link to a free download. It's a pre-wire quick guide. It is a free download. It does have some other things in it about home audio and TVs, but it does have a page there about what to wire for your security. And so you can go there and get that and use that as a reference guide. As always, if this video has been helpful, please give us a like and subscribe and watch for our next video.